All right, we've got a few more examples here to go over for section 8.6, part 2. So example number 5, suppose a parametric equation for the line segment between 7, negative 9 and 5, negative 6 have the form of x of t equals a plus bt and y of t equals c plus dt. If the parametric curve starts at 7, negative 9 when t equals 0 and ends at 5, negative 6 at t equals 1, then find a, b, c, and d. All right, so this is a line segment. It is starting at 5, negative 6, so let's stay about here, and 7, negative 9. So it's going to start t equals 0, so that means our starting point is at this spot, and t equals 1 is moving to here, and then that ends. So there is no more rotations, no more bouncing back and forth or anything like that with this parametric equation. So if the parametric curve starts at 7, negative 9 when t equals 0, what that is telling us is if t equals 0, oops, we want a t there. Let's make a table of values here for our t, our x, and our y. Okay, so t is starting at 0. We know at that point x equals 7 and y equals negative 9. When t equals 1, we know that x equals 5 and we know that x e y equals negative 6. So from the equations that we are given up here, we know that x is equal to 7. So we're going to start off with our initial one. So when x equals 7, we don't know a or b yet, but we do know that t is equal to 0 when x equals 7. Okay, so that makes it pretty nice. That means all of this is 0, and then just a is equal to 7. So then we are done with that first part. So a equals 7. Now let's go to y. When y is negative 9, we don't know c or d, but we know t is 0. So again, here, 0, c is equal to negative 9. So we've got that part down. Okay, so now let's go on to the other information that we know. We know when t equals 1, then x equals 5. So let's write an equation for that. We're going to use the information that we already know up here. So for x to equal 5, a is equal to 7, plus b we do not know yet but we do know that t is equal to 1. So solving for that equation there, we know that b would equal negative 2. Okay, and now let's look on our last one. So we know negative 6 is y, that's equal to c, which we do know, yes, we do know c is negative 9. We do not know d yet, but we know t is equal to 1. And then add 9 to both sides, and we get D is equal to 3. And that's all we needed to know for that one. Okay, example number 6. I think this is the hardest one to really understand using parametric equations. with, um, and, and I guess it would really help to understand that with parametric equations, they can cycle back and forth. So this is the full cycle of our picture. This um, does not go on and on and on forever, like we would normally think of some quadratic type of an equation. This is an end, ending point. It ends there, and it ends here. So I think that that is important to know. So we have x of t is equal to a cosine of bt, and y of t is equal to c sine of dt. So these are both equations that we're familiar with. So if we look at the x values, just the x values as all, and we want to think about what our amplitude is, okay? So you could even look, kind of look at your screen sideways. Think of that x value as being your height now this direction and your um, minimum value and your maximum value as being your amplitude, but it's in the x direction, not the y direction like we're normally used to seeing. So either kind of look at it sideways or 
um, just look at those x values. And so as we trace this, these x values, the highest we're going to get is 3, and the lowest we're going to get is negative 3. So our amplitude for the x values is 3. So that tells us that a is going to equal 3. Then looking at the sine or the y values, for the y values, we're going to be looking this direction. We want to know what is the maximum value. Okay, so like our amplitude that we looked at when we were doing regular sine and cosine. And our lowest value, so we're going to go from positive 6 to negative 6. That is going to be our highest and our lowest values for our y. So again, going back and thinking of that as our amplitude, that is what C is going to be. So C is going to equal 6, meaning that that's our highest and our lowest values that it can get from the center is a distance of 6. Then to find your B and your D. So we want to think of T as um, because your T values are what we're finding in a table of values. So let's start off by just saying that t is equal, less than or equal to 2 pi, greater than or equal to 0. So if we say that t is between 0 and 2 pi, that's going to take us through a whole period of cosine, right? So we know our cosine function starts on a high, okay? Then to get through one complete period of cosine, that's going to have, we're going to have to go between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so let's start off with this. Let's see what happens at the beginning point. So when we start, we need to know what our starting value is. So our starting point is going to be when t equals 0. So that's where we're starting at. So when t equals 0, what happens to our equations here? Well, cosine of 0 is going to be um, 1. Okay, that's our highest point right here, is that's where it starts. So we're going to be at 1. And then for sine, sine starts at your midline. So at our starting point for sine, we are going to be at zero. Right? So our starting point is going to be where x equals three, because cosine of zero is going to equal one. And then here, the sine of zero is going to equal zero. So our starting point is at 3, 0. So let's make that a different color here. This is our starting point at 3, 0. Okay, so our starting point, we're going to start here. Then we're only looking at the x values for right now. Okay, so I want to know how many times am I going to have to trace through this t value, these t values, to get this complete picture. So for x, we're starting where x is at the highest point. Remember how we said that 3 is the highest value x gets to. So we're starting at the highest point, just like we did here in um, our cosine. Our cosine values start at the highest point. So we're going to go from our highest point down all the way to our lowest point, well, we're only looking at x values, but if you imagine being on the graph, too, we've gone from the highest to the lowest. So that's from 0 to pi, right? We've gone from 0 to pi. We still have not traced the complete picture yet. Okay, so we're going to go back now, because that's the lowest that we get. So now we got to go back up to the highest point again. So looking at that, we go down to the lowest back up to the highest, all right? So that means we've gone through 0 to 2 pi for our t values. We've gone to the lowest, then back up to the highest. Well, we've only gone through half of our picture. 
we've got to do that all over again to get down here to the lowest and then back up to the top. So we could, would need to go back and forth again. That means we need two complete rotations of t. If t is going to be between 0 and 2 pi, I said t was between 0 and 2 pi because I wanted that to be a complete period of cosine and sine. Okay, now we could play with these. They could be different, but um, somewhere on here it says, I believe on your homework it'll say that um, b and d are between 1 and 3. So that tells me we're just doing this as a complete period. So just keep your complete period for t. And then we want to know how many times we have to go through that complete period. And that gives you your b value. So your b value would be 2. Because that's how many times I had to go back and forth. Make a complete rotation on my x values. I had to go all the way to the lowest value. Which is half of a period. Then back up to my highest value again. That make one complete period in my y. Then I had to do that one more time to be able to trace this whole picture. Okay, so that told me that t is that b is two. Now let's do this again. We're going to go in terms of y, and we're going to be looking at our sine function now. So our sine function and our y starts. You know, our our, our starting point was right here. So I'm looking at just the y values though. So we start at the midline, which is exactly what happens with sine. And we go from our midline up to our highest point, which for y is up to 6. Okay, so if we're looking at the y values on our equation, going up just to the highest point, that gets us all the way to the top. Now we need to go down, and, and that's here on this. So this is up to our highest point. And now we need to go all the way down from our highest to our lowest, okay, on our picture, that's going to bring us all the way down here, okay, that also gets us down to here, and then we need to go back up, because it does say whole numbers between 1 through 3, so we're going to go back up to our starting point, end at the starting point, which will take us back up to the midline which takes us up to our midline here. Cannon, you want to talk to Grandpa? There. Talk to Grandpa. Okay, and so then that takes us back up, and that was only one period, okay? So we only traced that period line one time. So that means D is only going to be one, because we're saying that T is from zero to two pi. So if we drew a table of values, put 0 to 2 pi in for t, then um, d would have to equal 1 to complete that whole picture. Okay, same thing with b. If t is between 0 and 2 pi, then b is going to equal 2. Now, if we did different things and did like 0 to pi was t, then we would have to increase our b value, and it would not be between, be between 0 and 3. So there are ways that we can play around with those numbers and make them different, um, but that's what we want to stick with. Just make that t value equal the period.